Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments. Alamance County is pleased to present the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Call the meeting to order. Merry Christmas to everybody from this entire panel, including Mr. Thompson, uh, who was married to Turner. Sat Turner. Turner. Sorry. They uh, do have the same first name, right? <laughs> uh, was who was married? Married? Well, Pam and Craig. No. Uh, me and Turner didn't get married this weekend. Sorry, uh, who was married Saturday, uh, and for some unknown reason decided not to be here today. <laughs> and he said he wasn't going to take a Zoom call either. <laughs> uh, and we wish both he and his new wife a wonderful future forever. Okay. Mr. Carter, you have the honors. Yes, I do. Um, ran across something. A little, uh, a little elf provided it to me. His first name is Judy. <laughs> um, and uh, I, I thought, thought it was very appropriate um, for us to consider these points. Now, they've been attributed to Abraham Lincoln, but he didn't originate them. And uh, the actual originator was William J. Boaker. Uh, but it was attributed, I believe, to Abraham Lincoln by a former president of the United States, who shall go nameless tonight. Um, read these points, and then I'll... Open with a prayer. You cannot bring about prosperity by discouraging thrift. You cannot strengthen the weak by weakening the strong. You cannot help the wage earner by pulling down the wage payer. You cannot further the brotherhood of man by encouraging class hatred. You cannot help the poor by destroying the rich. You cannot help out of trouble, and I cannot keep out of trouble by spending more than you earn. You cannot build character and courage by taking away man's initiative and independence. You cannot help men permanently by doing for them what they could and should do for themselves. Join me in prayer. Father God, as we just think about the many needs that we deal with in our community, as a Board of Commissioners, the many needs that our communities have, dear Lord, the many needs that the people that habitat in our community have. We ask, dear Father, that you, in this season, help us to have an open heart, a heart of giving, a heart of compassion, a heart of love, a heart of grace and mercy. And we ask, dear Father, that you watch over and lead us in the actions that we partake tonight, that they'll be acceptable in your sight, dear Lord. And we ask these things in the powerful and holy name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Join me in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do I have a motion for the approval of the agenda? So moved. I'll second. Motion second. Any discussion? There being none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Public speakers, and we have, it looks like eight. Um, and let me remind everyone we have a timer. Uh, each speaker receives three minutes, and we have a total of 30 minutes. So if we don't reach everyone, and it looks like there are eight speakers, uh, then at 30 minutes, we're required to cut it off according to our procedure. Okay. Is it Aspen Galls? Is that pronounced correctly? And there's no address, no comments. 
How about a Wyatt gauze? G-A-U-Z-E. And there is no oversight. Signed up online. They did. Signed up online. All right. Well, not being here. Uh, Jennifer Riddell. Also signed up online. Peter Malcolm. I'm here. <laughs> Please come forward. Um, as I speak a bit funny, I take the liberty of writing down uh, what I'm trying to say. Good evening. My name is Peter Malcolm. I live in Thompson Road, Graham. Uh, I was not able to speak at your December the 4th meeting owing to a stunt pulled by people who want the ABSS to get more money. Consequently, you did not hear from people like me who feel the ABSS could perform better while spending less. I have prepared a written version of my comments and on the back you will find what I wanted to say on December the 4th. The auditor's report for the ABSS is now available. Um, while the budget for the financial year that ended on June the 30th, 2023, was 390 million, it seemed unlikely that they could spend that kind of money. And I was forecasting 343 million, but according to the audit report, the expenditure was 310 million only. Um, that is still a staggering amount of money for educating 21,932 students. Uh, it works out at $14,136 per student. Um, I'd hope something can be done about that. So finally, I'd like to comment that school choice. With a little urging from the commissioners, uh, Chairman Paisley and the other commissioners, 2023 turned out to be a great year for school choice legislation in North Carolina. Governor Cooper's veto was overridden 16 times several of the overrides related to education reform bills. No wonder the governor declared an education emergency. In 2024, let's make sure we take full advantage of the new legislation in Alamance County. Um, let's also seek more education reforms, such as ESA's education savings accounts and other measures such as those I would have mentioned if, if I'd been allowed to speak on December the 4th. And thank you, sirs, for what you do. And, oh, madam, as well. Sorry. That's all right. I'm good. <laughs> thank you, sir. If I mispronounce a name or something, it's partially because I had to borrow my wife's glasses and partially because I may not be able to read your handwriting. <laughs> Gustav, Josh, Gustav. Uh, Josh, uh, Gustav, is that correct? Yes. Yes, sir. Please come forward. Good evening. I'm Josh Gustaf, the general manager of Tri Corner C and D Landfill, also known as Cobble Sand Rock, and I reside on West Greensboro Chapel Hill Road in Liberty. My purpose here today is just to introduce myself to everyone and be the local point of contact. Uh, the a little background on me: I've been building and operating landfills for 19 years. I joined Meridian Waste in 2018 at its Lunenburg, Virginia MSW landfill. And uh, operationally, we have made some changes at the landfill. We have uh, submitted the landfill permit to be transferred to Meridian's name from Coble Sand Rock. Hopefully it's done by the end of this year. Uh, we have gotten rid of all the unusable equipment. We've made major entrance improvements with the fence, the gate, and right now we have Christmas lights on it, so if anybody has been by there. Uh, lastly, I wanted to share my experience. About four weeks ago, me and Mr. Coble delivered 32 turkeys to the neighbors and uh, found them all to be very welcoming, and they got to meet me, so if they have any problems, concerns, they know who to contact. Thank you, guys. Excellent. Thank, thank you. you. And we thank you as well. Thank you. Chris Smith. I can read your name. <laughs> Good evening, commissioners. I'll try to keep this quick. I know you have a busy agenda tonight. Uh, my name is Chris Smith. I live in Mebane with my wife and four children. I'm also a candidate for one of the three seats on this board in next year's election. I'm running as a staunch supporter of our public schools. 
The working families of this county who rely on our public schools are tired of watching members of this board fight with our school board over school funding. A quality publicly funded K-12 education for our children is a right, not a privilege. Unfortunately, we have malicious people in this county hell-bent on defunding our public schools. I want to address one such individual who spoke at the December 4th meeting of this board. Ed Priola stood up here and tried to deceive you into believing that our schools are already properly funded. He pointed out that this county has increased funds to ABSS in nine of the last 10 years. What Mr. Priola didn't say is that this county gives a smaller percentage of its overall budget to our schools than it did 10 years ago. The fact that this county spends a, a little bit more each year on our schools is not proof that our schools are fully funded. It's just an example of inflation. I would normally act surprised that I must explain inflation to a man with a PhD in management, but Ed knows what he's doing. After all, this is a man who maliciously refers to our I'm public sorry. schools. We are not allowed in our procedure to name names and criticize individuals. You can talk about policy, anything else. Yes, sir. Understood. Um, all right, I'll, I'll speak more broadly. Um, it is also inappropriate to refer to our public schools as government schools. This is a trick that uh, political extremists use to malign our public schools and our teachers. Um, a certain someone had a problem with the word investment. He doesn't like referring to public funding as an investment, but it is an investment. It's an investment that allowed this poor working class kid from a single mother to graduate from high school, serve my country for four years in the Air Force, and graduate from college. None of that would have been possible without public schools and public school teachers. We can't just throw our hands up and say we can't compete with surrounding counties. We can, we should, and I'll continue to fight for that to happen. Thank you for your time. And we thank you. Henry Vines. Henry, you've never spoke before <laughs> since the last meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Paisley. Um, my name is Henry Vines, and um, I live at 3450 Snow Camp. I just wanted to come to, for you tonight and just wish each and every one of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I know this has been a trying year and a tough year for us, for all of us. Um, We've got some tough decisions that we've got to make in the new year. And I just hope that as we go forward that we can do this and make some headway on getting things done that needs to be done. I want to wish all the staff out here a Merry Christmas. Worked with a lot of them, and they are very good staff, they're very knowledgeable, and appreciate each and every one of your service. And Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And Barry Joyce. Barry, you did not talk to us the last time, so. No, I couldn't get in the building. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, a couple of things. Just you, you can't name names. <laughs> you know, I, I keep hearing all this stuff about this mole thing. I just like to get some things clear. This mold company that came to Alamance County was brought here and recommended or talked about to the county school board by a county commissioner. Okay? So the public needs to know that. This is not somebody the school board looked up and found. They were brought here by a county commissioner. Uh, everybody keeps talking about this no-cap contract. You sign no-cap contracts every day of your life. If you're on Medicare, you got a no-cap contract. If you're on medical insurance policy with no limit, which you want, you don't want a limit on it. It's a no-cap contract. Attorneys live off of no-cap contracts. Because if you go to an attorney, he's going to give you a retainer fee, and he's going to say, well, okay, when we run out of this, we'll, get, we'll ask for another retainer fee. And if we end up in court, I can't tell you exactly what it's going to cost. So, I mean, I really can't give you a total number. So that's a no-cap contract. So I don't understand why we're standing up here criticizing the school board for a no-cap contract when it was a crisis. FEMA does crisis every day. Natural disasters occur. Every, insurance companies enter into no-cap contracts constantly because they want the things fixed. They have to be fixed. They have to be done. They have to stop the loss from getting bigger. 
I mean, I don't know why there's such a big deal about saying people. I mean, he got so bad in here. There's a couple people running for cash. Somebody looked back and said, these idiots, these idiots signed a no-cap contract, you know, that I've never heard of anybody ever doing that in their life. It happens every day. Some of you do them every day. And you, you couldn't make a living without them. You've made your whole life living with them. So, you know, I'm just trying to clear up some things. You know, it, it just seems like, you know, the, I went to a ball game at Williams High School Saturday. I didn't recognize the gym. You could breathe in it. Last year I went to ball games over there. When I'd come out, I'd be hoarse just from breathing the air in the school. <coughs> now I went over there, it's, it looks like a different gym, you know. And so I don't know what's been let go, but I know this. I know that other counties, their gyms, uh, well, let me give you a good example. Guilford County, good low, go and look how much bond money they spent since 2020. I think it's about $2.7 billion. Okay? So they must have kicked the can down the road and all of a sudden it caught up with them. $2.7 billion? That's a lot of money. A lot of money. Thanks, sir. We have our consent agenda that's been published. Anyone that wanted to look at it did. Do I have a motion as to the consent agenda? Motion to approve. I'll second. second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? It's unanimous. Thank you. apologize in advance. Um, I had like five areas, including my left arm and shoulder, x-rayed this afternoon. And so I'm having a little trouble shifting pages. So it <laughs> looks a little awkward. Uh, the radiologist assured me they call me in the morning and tell me what, if anything, is broken. <laughs> anyway, okay, that brings us down to our annual audit. And please go forward. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. Good evening. On behalf of Martin Starnes and Associates, I'd like to present Alamance County's 2023 audited financial statements. Some audit highlights. The county received an unmodified opinion. This is a clean audit opinion. I would like to thank Susan Evans, as well as Jennifer Blaylock and the finance department, all of their staff. Um, I would especially also like to thank Candace Goble at DSS and the health department as well for all their hard work this year on the audit. Um, we request a lot of information for an audit and it's given to us timely, accurately. We do appreciate that working relationship. And I would like to also note that Susan is a competent finance officer that um, she has the skills, knowledge, and experience required to oversee audit services, and it's a requirement under Government Auditing Standards 2018 revision. Your general fund had revenues of, of 204 million, an increase of about 4%, expenditures of 196 million, an increase of about 4% there. I will detail those further along in the presentation. Fund balance, you added about 6.6 .6 million up to 91 million. Available fund balance, 75.9 million, about an increase of 7.4 7 million. Available fund balance as a percent of expenditures for the general fund was 38.6%. Unassigned fund balance, 46.7 million. And unassigned fund balance as a percent of general fund expenditures, 23.75%. Your top three revenues for the general fund were property taxes at 52%, local option sales taxes at 23%, restricted intergovernmental revenues, your federal and state grants, were 13%, and other revenues, 12%. Property taxes were $105 million, an increase of about 2%, overall very comparable. 
local option sales taxes were $46.5 million, an increase of about 6% uh, due to increases in consumer spending. Restricted intergovernmental revenues remain comparable at $26.9 million, about 2% increase there. And then your top three expenditures for the general fund were public safety at 26%. Education, 28%, human services, 18%, and other expenses, 28%. Education was at 55.4 million, an increase of 7% in the increased allotment to the schools. Human services were at 36.1 million, about a 1% increase there overall comparable. Public safety was at 50.2 million, an increase of about 8%, primarily due to salary increases. Your landfill fund had an operating income of 669,000, uh, investment in capital assets of 9.6 million, unrestricted net position, 13.8 million, and total net position, 23.5 million. Your quick ratio for the landfill fund was 53, and the LGC would be concerned if that were less than one. And then your performance indicators, the audit was submitted timely. And then you did have a couple of compliance findings, uh, one related to Medicaid for a couple of um, missing child support referrals and household composition um, was incorrect on a couple of cases that we tested and then low income energy assistance program, three cases were missing an applicant signature. And this does conclude my presentation. Does anyone have any questions? Could you go over the last thing you just said about the um, performance and the last thing you're talking about? Sure. The DSS and something else, That's all, I heard that. Yes, um, there was a finding in Medicaid. Okay. For two out of 60 applicants that we tested had incorrect documentation for household composition and we're missing a uh, child support referral. And then for the low income home energy assistance program, mm -hmm. three out of 60 cases were missing an applicant signature. Okay, thank you. Sure. We thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Stevens, as to the um, planning board, I think you had a comment that you wanted to make. Yeah, so we're going to talk about the appointment of members to the new board of adjustment and also to the planning board. Um, I think Brian's going to address some of that with you, but I wanted to point out that as we make the appointments to the board of adjustment, we don't presently have a specified term of years for those appointments. The statute says that they can be appointed for terms of up to three years. Um, and my suggestion to you in appointing those five members and the alternates is to appoint several of those folks for three years and several for two years. That way you have a staggered term and you're not going to be turning over the entire board of adjustment on any one year. So my suggestion would be that you appoint three of the five members to the new board of adjustment to a three-year term and two to a two-year term. That way you don't have everyone leaving at the same time. Okay. And we thank you. Yes. Mr. Mr. Commissioners, we, we do need to appoint five members uh, to the Board of Adjustment for their for this slate. You'll see we also have considered two alternate members. So yeah, are you on adjustment or planning? I'm adjustment. sorry, Board of Adjustment, right? All right, thank you. Start with Board of Adjustment, right? So the uh, applicants uh, this year are Ray Cobb, uh, Tom King, Isaac Holt, Michael Owens, Deborah Hyder, Lindsay Causey, Max Morgan, and Henry Chen. Yes. Uh, Chairman, I, I'd like to make a motion. Yes. Uh, listening to uh, uh, just have Rick, I just want to clarify something before I start. Sure. Um, you mentioned to offset the, the terms. Yes. Do you have, do, do I use it uh, arbitrarily just pick two, or do I use alphabetical order, or do I use yeah, I, experience? Yeah, I think in alphabetical order, um, it is 
about as fair as it could be, right? Yes. Looking at a list of people, I would say the first two people on an alphabetical list by last name might be someone you would consider appointing for two years, and then um, the next three would be for a three-year term with the understanding that they could reapply and could continue to serve even beyond that two-year term. But it gives us a turnover, not all at one time. So we'll start with um, an alphabetical order. The first two would be two years, and uh, the next three would be three years. Just a suggestion, yes. It, there's no right or wrong here, okay. No right or wrong. Okay, well, let me go forward then. Thank you for uh, that clarification. Sure. I just want to make sure before I get started. Thank you. Uh, uh, Chairman, my motion would be for um, the Board of Adjustments the, f the five, Ray Cobb, Mike Owen, Isaac Holt, Deborah Hyder, and Michael Wilson. Uh, what I've tried to do here is look at everyone who had submitted an application and then try to devise a list of folks who can attend the meetings, because looking and talking to some of the people on the current board, that their issues were not having a quorum to get business done. So what I did here is I tried to uh, make a, a player's list of all the people who had applied for the position and come to a conclusion on the best five. Now, the two alternates that I have are Richard King and Henry Chandler. I think these folks are well qualified, and I also think that they are conscientious enough about showing up at the, the meetings and, and let's get the business done for the people of Alamance County. So, Chairman, that's my, that's my motion. Do you plan to, uh, with the alternates, name them as alternate one and alternate two, and if so, what order? Yes, sir. Uh, alternate, uh, thank you for bringing that up. I had it uh, in this order, uh, Richard King and then Henry Chandler, and that Order. And you named them alternate one. And alternate two, correct. All right. Uh, also, uh, going back to what Mr. Stevens had directed me to, uh, in this particular scenario, the two at the top would be uh, Ray Cobb, and uh, if I'm doing my math, uh, ABC's right, it'd be Isaac Holt. That's right, I think so. Okay, and those would be for two-year terms. And the bottom three, uh, Mike Owen, Deborah Hyder, and Michael Wilson would have three-year terms. I'll second that motion. All right. Actually, we have two seconds. Oh. Well, thank uh, you. Mr. Carter, second your motion. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm not that. sure that Michael Wilson has an applicant on yeah. board adjustment. Am I confused? Well, I, I don't know that they're an applicant. I'm, I think oh, okay. they could probably still appoint uh, right. someone who Sorry, what, I, what I did right. there okay. is I, I took everyone who sent an okay. application gotcha. and I tried to build a team. Okay, that's what I. That's how I started my my Thank process. You. Any further discussion? All in favor of this motion, signify by saying aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Thank you. We will now go to our planning board. Commissioners, we next need to fill four expiring terms on the Alamance County Planning Board. Uh, applications were received from Amy Perkins, Sandy Ellington Graves, Rodney Cheek, those were reappointments. Also applications for new members from William Henry Vines, Henry Chandler, Lee Isley, David Hadley, Catherine Dickens, Max Morgan, Michael Wilson, and Lindsey Causey. And we'll be making four appointments, that's correct? Correct. All right. Board, do we have a motion? I do. And we may have different ones. Just, I just thought I'd bring it up. Uh, for reappointments, I'd like to nominate Sandy Ellington Graves and Rodney Cheek. And for new appointments, I'd like to recommend Lee Osley and Henry Vines. Chairman, I have an alternate uh, proposal. Uh, my motion would include the following. Reappointments, Rodney Cheek, Amy Perkins. Appointments, Lee Isley and Henry Vines. I'll second that motion. Thank you. 
Any further discussion? All in favor of uh, Mr. Lashley's motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, it's four to one. Uh, three, three to one, sorry. All right. Okay, county attorney report. Nothing further from me tonight, board. Thank you. Best report all night. Thank you. <laughs> okay, county manager. Nothing to report tonight, Adam. Thank all you. right. Second best report. <laughs> county commissioners. You want to just go down the road, Miss mm -hmm. uh, Thompson? Um. It's Christmas, so I could read something kind of Christmassy, right? Mm -hmm. Something Absolutely. very positive, right? Because we could all use something positive. Um, somebody sent me a TikTok the other day of just this most amazing story, and I wanted to share it with you. It's very quick. It's just handwritten two things, so it's we're not, trust me, five minutes at the most. Um, and it's out of 2 Kings chapter 5, and it's about Naaman. And uh, Naaman was this big commander, just all that, you know. He was the commander for the king of Aram, and he had status, and he had money. He was a big deal, but he also had leprosy. And back then, um, you didn't go to urgent care and get this took care of with some kind of shot or medication. You would lose body parts. Your nose may fall off, your arm may fall off. It was a death sentence. It really was. And um, he was considered like a big old outcast, and, and if anybody come around you, you had to yell and scream unclean. Now imagine the kind of isolation and depression that people would go into that because it, you was just on a death sentence. Well, the king of Aram sent a letter to the king of Israel to request for him to be healed because that's kind of how they did. And the king of Israel thought, oh, I don't heal people, you know. And uh, so back then when they got into real despair and depression, they just ripped their clothes and you know, poured ash on their self. That was the way they did it. And Elijah, the prophet, had heard about this and he sent word to get Naaman to go down to the Jordan River, which was nasty, and um, wash himself seven times. Well, you gotta figure Naaman was a big deal. And, um, he didn't wanna go down a nasty river, and he didn't wanna take time to dip himself seven times. He wanted you know, Elijah to come out, lay hands on him, and just be boom, spectacular, make the evening news. But that ain't the way Elijah worked. He had faith, he didn't need to have something big. And so um, he didn't meet him in person, and it really ticked off Naaman. Naaman was just full of rage and just, just ready, ready to go home and just leave. And so uh, one of Naaman's guys said, hey, what are you doing? If, um, if he tells you to do something simple, why do you have to have something so great? Why don't you try the simple? You have nothing to lose. And so he got over it pretty quick, and he went down to the old nasty river, and he dipped himself seven times in the Jordan. And when he came out of that seventh time, it says in Scripture that his skin was as soft as that of a baby boy's skin. That's pretty perfect. He was healed. Well, seven times. What if he'd have quit on six? You know, it's so easy just to quit because we get so discouraged. We can get full of pride and we can lose all sight of what really matters. And we can forget the main thing. Our pastor used to always say, keep the main thing the main thing. Well, in a minute, we can, um, we can turn on the very people that we've supported for so long and saw them do such a good job because... We can let our emotions get the best of us, and we all do that because we just do. We're human beings. And so, um, you know, and sometimes we'll say things that we regret, and we regret them later. And uh, that old guy that said, united we stand, divided we fall, he knew what he was talking about. And sometimes we really need to remember that. Just simple. So I tell you, as it's the season of miracles, Alamance County, don't quit on six. we got to go to seven. Um, and, and don't stop your miracles from happening because this is the season of miracles. And we got a lot of things facing us. And this is where we have to do it all for the right reason, no matter how hard and how difficult. Because Naaman could have went home and just forgot it and just literally fell apart. <laughs> or he could have quit on six and it would have not mattered. And so and that's just something I want us to think about whenever we get ready to quit stuff. And, we get mad and we just don't know how to get past it because we're afraid of what it's going to look like or who it's going to tick off. Um, leaders have to make those decisions to never quit. 
no matter how difficult they are. And so um, if there's one thing you don't forget this week, it's who's born to save us all. And, um, and that's all that really matters. And take that spirit, 365, not just this coming weekend. So that's it. And we thank you. Mr. Lashley. Thank you, Chairman. I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak tonight. Uh, I wanted to take this opportunity uh, just to um, talk about the latest news and to clear the air a little bit. Several things that I've read this weekend were completely and totally off base. And I just wanted to let everyone know the reason why I did not file for re-election. It has everything to do with having every confidence that I have in the Alamance County voters and the citizens of Alamance County. I did not think it was proper, and I did not think that it was in your best interest for me to ask you for four more years when I had a feeling that I was not going to be able to fulfill that obligation. That's the reason why. So we could clear the air. Everyone knows they don't have to speculate and they don't have to make up things that don't exist. I'm telling you the reason why. It's because I did not believe that I could fulfill the obligation for the citizens of Alamance County for four years. Did it mean that I didn't have interest in moving forward? Absolutely not. I had every interest in moving forward. This is a, a job that I, um, I take very seriously because I realize how many people are depending on me to do my homework and to make sure that the finances of Alamance County are taken care of. With that being said, I just want to also say this to one of our speakers tonight. The information you received tonight is a legally submitted document. You can make up all the things that you want to make yourself feel right, but the fact of the matter is, is those particular things for Martin Starnes go back for a decade and you can go and look at them and you can actually see the real numbers. So when you do talk to the voters of Alamance County, that you get it right, that you don't try to deceive them, that you, we all play on the same numbers and we all get on the same page. Sir, I promise you that things in Alamance County government will get a lot better. With that being said, I just want to uh, thank everyone for the uh, support and uh, fellowship this past year. I want to uh, wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a very prosperous New Year. And uh, let's come back to the first of the year ready to do some work because we still have a lot of work to do. So, Chairman, thank you. Mr. Carr. Yes, thank you. Um, well, I don't want a commissioner to go unnamed. Uh, it was pointed out that it was brought to the attention of the school system, ABSS, that by a commissioner of the availability of... Uh, Builder Services to do the mold remediation. Um, I happened to be in Raleigh at the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners event when a young lady who also works here, who's sitting right over there, our county clerk, had mentioned to uh, Mr. Uh, Bass, Ben Bass, that I was there and he might want to speak to me. And he did, and he told me that he could get the work done in the time frame that was required. So I made a phone call to, uh, I believe I made a contact with Ms. Graves and with uh, Dr. Um, Butler. <laughs> brought a blank. Uh, <laughs> Butler. And uh, gave them the name. By the way, they have been a contractor in the past with uh, ABSS as well. So there, I got no benefit from it. All I did was pass along a possibility of getting the work done so we could get our kids in school. Um, somebody wants to assume that I made a, any benefit, they can check my financials. Be glad to share it. But uh, um, that said, I want to see us work better in 2024 than we've worked in 2023. I want to see us get all the work done that needs to be done for Alamance County and our citizens, students, teachers. Uh, farm workers, laborers, whatever whatever stripe you wear, I want you to have a wonderful year, a wonderful, prosperous year, and I uh, want Alamance County to do the same. And thank you for your confidence in myself and in your board here for the past year. And uh, if 
By the way, Bill doesn't leave at the end of the night. He has a whole nother year under to come up before he gets out of here. <laughs> 11 months. <laughs> 11 months. Well, actually, you will be, that's right, not, that's right, 11 months. You won't be here at that first meeting in December, will you? No, sir. It will. Yeah, you won't. But anyway, I'm going to miss him, I have to admit. He's been a fabulous associate and uh, a contributor to the, to the citizens of Alamance County. First off, uh, one of the speakers indicated that uh, there are contracts that are not. In fact, if you have a job with the county, you probably get paid by the hour, so there's not a set amount of your salary. We have to appropriate a set amount, but it's by the hour. Attorneys typically contracts are typically by the hour because you have no idea what you're getting into. But I do know that some of the ABSS contracts had set amounts and not to exceed. Um, and so I think um, the one speaker is trying to compare apples and oranges, not apples and apples. Um, yeah, some contracts are by the hour. Some contracts don't have caps, but I have never personally, with my law office, my home, or anything else, signed a construction contract that did not have a cap on it. And that's what I was referring to. And I think the speaker understood that. Um, so I, I think the general public needs to be aware of that. Um, as to our staff and having served with these members and including Craig Turner, uh, it's been a real pr privilege. Uh, and I promise you I'm not going to fall again. So I don't plan to have x-rays again after today. <laughs> At least I hope not. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, it's been a real pleasure serving with these guys and even more so our staff. Uh, We've had a uh, county manager and county attorney that are relatively new, uh, almost a year and a half now each. Uh, it's been a true pleasure. And Brian, Tori, Susan, always Bruce. a real, and Bruce, Bruce is hiding. <laughs> a real pleasure to serve with them as well. Um, I have made committee assignments each uh, board member has, uh, I've, I spoke personally with each and every one. I think everybody is reasonably happy with their assignments. Uh, there's some pet, uh, recreation and parks, for example. Everybody wants to be on that, and it can't happen. <laughs> so there was a winner of recreation and parks. Uh, and I know that Pam and I, uh, I think several of us have served on that board previously. Oh, uh, now I'm not saying anything to do with finances. Of, okay, uh, Susan, that does not disparage you or the auditor. <laughs> uh, but that will be made public, I assume, on tomorrow's uh, website. So it'll be published tomorrow, so you can see who the um, the assignments went to. They're very, very close to what they were for the previous year, um, but that'll be public knowledge as of in the morning. Um, one last word, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So move. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, signify by saying aye, aye. And, but commissioners cannot leave until you sign some of these documents. Uh, thank you for the <laughs> You beat me by 30 seconds, John. <laughs>
Thank you for watching the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Commissioner meetings typically occur on the first and third Monday of each month in the Commissioner's Chambers at the County Office Building at 124 West Elm Street in Graham. The first Monday meeting begins at 9.30 a.m. and the third Monday meeting begins at 6.30 p.m. Changes to the meeting schedule will be posted on the county website at www.alamance-nc.com. The video of this meeting will be broadcast on Local Gov TV. Please go to www.localgovtvnc.com for more information about their schedule and to see more videos produced by your local governments. You can also access this meeting through our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash Alamance County NC or by clicking the YouTube link on the county website. Technical questions regarding this meeting's broadcast or production may be sent to our county webmaster at webmaster at alamance-nc.com. This address is for technical questions only. Comments and questions about the content of this meeting may be made to the commissioners themselves. You can find their contact information at the Alamance County website at www.alamance-nc.com. There, you can click on the link that says County Commissioners to learn more about the commissioners, read minutes and agendas of commissioner meetings, and find other information about the county commissioners. You can also send mail correspondence to County Commissioners, 124 West Elm Street, Graham, North Carolina, 27253. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Alamance County Commissioner's Meeting. Thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on all our latest video content. If you're watching on Local Gov TV, be sure to visit their website to see all of the content made for you by your local governments.